name. As a boy, he always knew a sailor he would be, so he studied the law of the sea. Captain of his crew, a brave and vicious man, determined to explore, he discovered a new land. The sun and sky, and his heart would be his guide, a man of valor and pride. The king and queen, their blessings he obtained to carry the flag of Spain. And rain, a strong, courageous man, determined to explore, he discovered a new land. The sails raised high, he searched the great unknown, his quest for adventure, dispelling any fear. A sure, courageous man, Columbus it was he, who sailed to new horizons across the great blue sea. I don't care what it is, I'm not afraid of it. If it comes any closer, it'll get a taste of steel. Uh, Olaf, your sword is rusty. Huh? Lucky I brought these along. My spears. Your what? Huh? What are you doing with weapons like this, Olaf? I'm carrying on the tradition of the ancient Vikings who never went to sea unarmed. <laughs> now you're both ready to defend this ship. <laughs> Whatever it is, that thing sure is moving slowly. From the look of it, I'd say that it was drifting in the water. You know what I think, Olaf? I think it's a boat. If we want to be sure, we'd have to go closer. Closer? But what if it's a monster? I don't want to go near that horrible thing. Quiet! Stop your blubbering, you two, because we're not going anywhere. Yes, we are, Olaf. Huh? We can't simply sit here and let that thing drift out of sight. But... Sven! Harold! We're going forward! <gasps> Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Olaf, huh? help me row. <laughs> Olaf, stop rowing. We'll drift from here. <sighs> there it is. <laughs> Harold, man the tiller. Harold, the tiller. <laughs> Monster? That's no monster. Look for yourself. It's nothing but the skull of an animal mounted on a pole. Animal? What kind of a creature has a skull like that one? Looks like an ox, only bigger, much bigger. Olaf, come here. What is it? Look at that boat. Ever seen anything like it? Hmm. It's a hollowed out tree trunk. No, Mr. Columbus, I've never seen such a boat. Hmm. And look over there. What do you suppose lies under that cover? I don't know, sir. And I don't want to know either. Well, I do. Huh? Under that cover may lie a clue that will tell us where the vessel comes from. 
Have you gone mad? Oh, I'm sure there's a monster lying under there waiting to pop up and devour us. Haven't you seen enough? No, Olaf. I want to know what's under that cover, and I'm not afraid to look for myself. But, Mr. Columbus, wait! Don't worry. There's nothing to be afraid of in that little boat. Believe me. Now hand me a spear. Huh? Uh, right. Thanks. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Easy does it. Olaf! Huh? Uh. Uh. The cover is crusted with salt. And that means this boat's been at sea a while. You're right. Now, let's have a look underneath. Huh? Mr. Columbus, what do you see there? It's a body. Look at that. <laughs> hmm? That headdress, it's the same kind as the one I saw floating on the ocean. Of course, this boat must have floated here from Vinland. Perhaps this man was a leader. And as a final tribute to him, his people dressed him in ceremonial garb and cast him adrift on the ocean waters. The cold air of the north must have preserved him. He seemed so peaceful as though he were asleep. I should not have pulled back the cover. I have disturbed him. No, nothing can disturb this man now. Look, Olaf, arrows. He must have been a warrior. What? Yes, Harold, Sven, come and pay your respects to the warrior chieftain. Oh, I'm not going anywhere near that thing. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourselves, you cowards. Huh? <gasps> Mr. Columbus. The two boats are starting to drift apart. Huh? Olaf, hang on! Uh, I'm trying, but there's a swell picking up. Uh, 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 you better come into this boat before I lose my grip! Hmm? Hurry! But Olaf, I can't come back yet. I want to look. No time for looking, Mr. Columbus. Swell's too strong for me. Uh, uh, now hurry! Hmm. That's it! Climb aboard! Uh, 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 there he goes. The warrior chieftain on his final voyage. Drifting on the water, all alone. It's almost as though fate decreed that he should meet us here and prove to you that there's a land beyond the ocean. Farewell, great chieftain. May you find rest at the end of your journey. <gasps> Is he gone? Yes, Harold, he's gone. But he gave me what I came here to find, the truth. That's right. The truth that lay at the heart of the ancient Viking legend. The legend of a land called Finland. Hmm? Hmm? <gasps> the wind's returned! <laughs> <laughs> Sit the sails! <laughs> <laughs> the wind! I can hardly believe it! Well, I believe it! Now, don't just stand there. Help us with this sail! Right! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> This wind holds steady, we should be back home in a day or two. <laughs> I tell you, Sven, when I saw that skull looming in the fog, why, I thought for sure we were done for. That's good. Here, take a swig. Isn't it wonderful? We're going home! Never so glad to see this village. <laughs> huh? Hey! 
Is that you, Christopher? Huh? Yes, it is you. What are you doing in this puny little fishing vessel? Hmm. I don't see any fish. Didn't you catch any? <laughs> no, no fish here. We almost caught a headdress, though. Hmm, but it got away. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, but I do know Captain Saldan is looking for you, Christopher. We sail tomorrow. I'll be there soon. Olaf, I want to thank you. No, I should thank you. You gave me gold, and I'm very grateful for that. But you also helped me to find a treasure I thought I'd lost. My courage. Courage? That you have. I don't suppose I'll ever see you again, and I know I'll never forget you, my friend. Farewell. Goodbye, Olaf, Harold, Sven, and thank you. Great scholars of the ancient and modern world agree. There is a land beyond the ocean. Good morning, Paulson. How are you today? Fine, thank you, Captain. Well, Columbus, have you charted our voyage home? Yes. We should be able to leave Bristol on the next tide, sir. We'll be in Lisbon in two weeks. Ah, yes. Lisbon. Can't say I'm eager to go back there. From what the shipping agent has told me, the whole city is in an uproar. Huh? An uproar, sir? But why? Portugal's elderly king, Alfonso, has fallen ill. So ill, the dignitaries are coming to Lisbon from all over the world. They want to pay a final homage to the king, and of course, to meet his heir, young Prince John. No one knows the prince. He's a mystery. Oh, I see. And speaking of mysteries, a mysterious letter arrived for you. For me? It must have come to Bristol while we were in Iceland. Huh? <gasps> it's scented, Columbus. Enjoy it. Philippa. Huh? <laughs> oh. hmm? Dear Christopher, when I learned that you were leaving, I went to Lisbon Harbor to wish you a safe voyage. I was too late to speak to you. You might be interested to learn that Don Pedro is no longer my suitor. He says I think too much. Sounds like the sort of thing he'd say. It's true that I think a great deal, and lately all my thoughts are of you. The sooner I see you again, the happier I shall be. Ever yours, Philippa. What a wonderful letter. <clears throat> I don't want to disturb you, Columbus, huh? but if you're quite finished, can we set sail now? We sure can, sir. Way anchor! Set the main suit! Good work! Helmsmen, we're heading south! Aye, aye, sir! It's Christopher. <laughs> Bartholomew. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Welcome back, brother. You look well. I am. But what's going on here? The streets are full of people. They gather every day to watch the noblemen who've arrived to pay homage to the king. The royal doctors don't expect him to survive another week. Come, I'll fill you in on all the news. Fine. I seek the man named Christopher Columbus who just arrived on a sailing ship. Hmm? That's me. Don Bartolomeo de Perestrello sends his greetings and requests your company. Who is this Don Bartolomeo? He's the governor of Porto Santo and the brother of Felipe. Senor Columbus, Don Bartolomeo is not in the habit of being made to wait. Uh, pardon me. Come along then.
Felipe. Right this way, Senor Columbus. <gasps> Christopher? Christopher, is it really you? Felipe. <sighs> yes, Mother. You must not speak to him. Your brother Bartolomeo will take care of this. Do you understand? Mm hmm. Don Bartolomeo, permit me to introduce myself. I am Christopher Columbus of Genoa. Yes, I know. Let us dispense with the formalities. You're in love with my sister, but you must not see her anymore. I forbid it. Is that clear? <gasps> But, sir, how can you forbid me to see Philippa when you know nothing about me? I know all that I need to know. Huh? You are nothing but a lowly sailor. <sighs> I don't deny that you have a distinguished reputation. As a sailor and as a cartographer, you've made an excellent name for yourself in this city. But still, you're a commoner. You cannot change that. You're right. I can't. <laughs> but what has that to do with my fitness to be Felipe's suitor? Clearly, you don't understand the rules of our civilized Portuguese society. Commoners simply aren't worthy to marry nobles, and that's all there is to it. Ow! I think I'll have a drink. <laughs> Don Bartolomeo, my love for Felipe is great enough to overcome any barrier. I'm sorry, but I will not let your unjust disapproval prevent me from seeing your sister again, or from marrying her. <laughs> what? I know I can make Felipe happy. Isn't that the most important thing of all? No! Hmm. If you only knew how I love your sister, you would overlook my common birth. You're wrong. Nothing in the world can make me forget that you're a common sailor, and I forbid you to see my sister! I'm sorry, but I will see her. I have great power. Not enough power to stop me. I'm a very determined man! So am I. Oh. This interview is at an end. Good day, Senor Columbus. Sir. Columbus, is there anything at all I can do to make you change your mind? No, there isn't. I heard the whole thing, my dear. Dreadfully stubborn, isn't he? Yes. And Philippa's deeply in love with him. Perhaps we should give them permission to see each other. <sighs> Frankly, Mother, I don't think our permission is going to make much difference one way or the other. God bless your royal highness. Since your father fell ill, Prince John, you have endured many trials and proven that you are a worthy heir to our country's throne. Thank you, Father Martins. And you can be sure that when I do succeed to the throne, I shall not rest in my efforts to be a wise king. Good day, Father Martins. Huh? Ah, good day, Don Bartolomeo. Have you come from Porto Santo to pay homage to the king? Uh, yes and to take care of a delicate family matter. Ah, you mean your sister's suitor. In my opinion, Filippa will not find a better husband than young Senor Columbus in all of Portugal. Huh? Oh. But then she can decide that for herself. But father! Good day. Mm hmm. Yes? Come in, please. Hmm? Oh, hello, Christopher. Good morning, Father Martins. Was your trip to the North Atlantic a success? Yes. We went as far north as Iceland, and there I learned, well, frankly, I learned more than the Academy could have taught me. That's wonderful. I'm glad to hear it. Tell me, Christopher, do you believe that men can depend on the Lord for all their guidance? Huh? Well, yes, I do believe that. But surely there are times when our Heavenly Father leaves us to our own devices. Wouldn't you agree, Christopher? I'm not sure I follow you. I'm merely observing that it is not always enough to stand by and let fate take its course. There are times when a man must pass from thought to action if he is to make his dreams come true. After all, the Lord helps those who help themselves. That is what I believe. And in my own life, 
I pray that I'll have the courage to act and seek out Philippa again, because I love her. And are you quite certain that you'd be a fitting husband for her? Yes. Now, don't be so hasty with your answer, Christopher. Oh, it's all very well to speak of romance and the longings of your heart, but real love means true devotion. Will you give Philippa that? <sighs> yes, Father, I will. <laughs> You're a good man, Christopher. I believe you. Huh? Father Martins, where are you going? I have a surprise for you. <gasps> huh? I don't understand, Father. As I said, there are times when a man must pass from thought to action, even a priest. <laughs> <sighs> oh. oh, Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> Father, how can we ever thank you? Oh, don't thank me yet. You still have many obstacles to overcome. But now at least you can face them together. God bless you both.